piece. It's called 9 by 7 e 2022 oil on canvas 108 by 84 inches. So that's by about 9 by 7. Well we've been watching Pat's work for decades. Uh, we did a report on a show last week about uh, abstract painting in New York. I believe it was 1971 to 1983. Something like 35 female artists. And Pat had what I thought was one of the most impressive pieces in the show. Okay, I like this. Uh, there are some new things that uh, I haven't seen Pat using before. One of them is this, uh, it's like chalk lines. So she's divided her canvas into six rectangles. Also, uh, the dripping, the kind of, uh, well, they're calling this waterfalls. A lot of times the, uh, the backgrounds are just a solid color and then the dripping is in some kind of a figurative thing. But I'm liking uh, this latest body of work. This is called Waterfall Number 8. So I have to say this is the first Thursday evening gallery crawl I've been on in a long time. It's, the, uh, it's probably about a month and a half, maybe two months into the 2022-23 season and I haven't really uh, spent a lot of time over here in Chelsea. Okay, I kind of 
I like that she's doing these things with the color like this. And also, uh, it's not just a red, it's like five different colors of red, a couple of different colors of yellow hair. Also, uh, yeah, note the uh, variations in the gloss of the surface. Oh, that's fun. Oh gosh, look at those edges. That's amazing. It's, uh, it's some green under that red there. I wouldn't have known that. It's titled 9x7D. As I was saying, I got a uh, little view of one of her paintings from, I guess it was the late 70s. And uh, she was actually doing some things dealing with color, almost like uh, someone that was laying out a commercial design and they were getting ready for the printer and they had to uh, kind of decide what shades of chartreuse, magenta, yellow, black, and white that we're going to use. And, uh, I think in a way she's kind of, uh, incorporating those kinds of conceptual approaches to painting here. Thank you. Okay, so this one we've got a little grayscale in the middle. remember, gosh, this has got to be 10 or 12, maybe more years ago, Pat had a show at Lucas Chime and Reed, and uh, I was looking at the pieces and it was all black and white, and uh, I was looking at the titles, and then I realized that uh, I thought they were references to Barnett Newman paintings. And I went down to D.C. and uh, they've got a permanent installation of his, some of his big black and white stripe pieces there. And I could see that uh, Pat had been kind of riffing on his compositions. Okay, so this one is 9x7F. by 84. This is Rainbow Waterfall number one. 2022 oil on canvas. It's 108 by 108. Well, I was just talking about Pat kind of riffing on some Barnett Newman, and I just realized that in a certain way, this is kind of like a uh, Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue Barnett Newman painting. I was also talking to someone about uh, that Pat painting from the late 70s and how they thought it was very interesting and that uh, somehow when she started into her waterfall drip paintings that uh, she kind of got into a signature format and uh, well the way the art world is structured, once you kind of get a brand recognizable signature style, people want to keep uh, button, buttonholing you into that. I think this show actually shows that uh, 
Brad has got a lot of uh, various ways she can kind of play this thing and I like the, uh, the variations. Also it's great to see the difference between say the top blocks of these solid colors and then how they start to variegate into the little rivulets kind of change the colors as it reaches the bottom of the canvas says a lot about gravity the materiality of the paint okay this is a huge painting really huge I can get this all into the camera if frame or not. This is called Blue River, 2005 oil on canvas, 135 by 447 inches. Boy, that, that's big, so that's got to be maybe more than 30 feet across. So I was talking about the, uh, the variations in the color just as far as the blues go, the blues into the greens, there's probably a dozen various shades, tints, tones. This is interesting. So she's got some metallic silver in there and uh, this is kind of interesting because the uh, the splats, the splatters, the drips are kind of coming out from the side instead of just pouring directly towards the bottom of the canvas. I guess there's a certain uh, kind of alchemical attitude that some painters have and that is that uh, paint and pigment are powerful and uh, unique forces in their own right and that uh, sometimes the less you mess around with them the better it is that if you can figure out a way of getting the pigment to stick on a, on a surface, you just leave it. I think it was Gino Albertini, one of the Renaissance historians, artists, documentarians of the age talked about various things that you'd have to do if you're a painter, where you would buy your pigment, what you would do to mix it together, various surfaces that you would paint on and how much you should charge for things. And I think one of the things I liked was he said something about um, once you mix up your paint, grind your paint, get it all out there. The less you mess with it on the canvas, the better you want to keep the paint fresh. And uh, I think aspects of what Pat is doing goes right along with those ideas. Yeah, big painting. Three, 2022 oil on canvas. It's 108 by 108. Also, I think uh, I was talking about how some of the paintings have the kind of the variegated dripped backgrounds, and some of them are more solid. This is more of a solid kind of Indian red background. But that, of course, makes 
all the colors that you're laying on top of it a little look a little different. Also, if I was to compare this to some of the other red, yellow, and blue paintings, these this blue looks like ultramarine. Maybe she's mixed in a little black. Definitely reads a much darker blue. And again, gosh, she's got green and blue and all kinds of things there under the surface. try to keep this slow so people don't get seasick. Oh, that's kind of nice, the little uh, squiggles and the drips. As I was saying, there's a theory that you don't want to mess too much with the, the pigment also. The way that uh, these rivulets just kind of drip down and they're they're not brushed on they're just drawn down by gravity says a lot about the process this is 9 by 7 C oh and she's even uh, gridded this off even tighter than the other ones. And we've got some, uh, yeah, red snap lines. That's nice. I like the, uh, the aqua blue background. Again, that makes these little swatches of her waterfalls, the color thing, read differently. Also, uh, I was talking about the gravity. It's interesting to note how a lot of these rivulets curve down at the bottom and not just a little bit, they curve over like six, eight, ten inches maybe. Interesting. Okay, we're gonna wrap up looking at this big painting. Rainbow Waterfall number five. This is 108 by 108. Okay, so we're still kind of doing the red, yellow, and blue thing here, although we've got our red is turned into kind of a soft pink. Looks great on the orange. Now I get it, so the, uh, a lot of the, the underpainting is an exact contrast of what ends up being painted on the top. sloping rivulets. I think at one time I even uh, heard that Ashley Bickerton had been Pat's assistant for a while. And, uh, well, Ashley is, uh, is a great technician. <laughs> I guess you think that it would be a simple thing just to, uh, you know, mix up some paint and kind of pour it down the front of a canvas, but uh, I think that there's a lot of stuff going on here. One of them is that these drips almost run out exactly at the point where they hit the bottom edge. So that would uh, mean that you've got to mix the paint up to a certain consistency. James Com reporting on Pat Steer, Blue River and Rainbow Waterfalls at Hauser and Worth, 542 West 
22nd Street. You can like this. Share. Link it up to all your social media sites. You can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. And your suggestions. Do they say you can subscribe? We just ask you to say, as always, in our 18th year here, thank you, Kate. What your name is? We are Alice Valentine. Alice Valentine? Yes.